Hey, I'm Yvette, and I'm from Australia. And this is Darcy, he's Canadian. We met by chance and realised we had heaps in common. After just three dates, we decided to sail around the world together. Despite having almost no sailing experience, we're determined to make it happen. Our first step was to buy a boat. Meet Supernova, our 36-year-old catamaran. She's clearly in need of some major work and we're going to show you what it took to make this old boat a blue water cruiser. We've condensed two years of work into this video so that you can set sail with us next week as we begin our adventure. Stay tuned, at the end of this video we'll give you a look at our upcoming world sailing plans. We're about halfway done our major refit so far. We've done a bunch of work inside, outside and below the waterline. We have heaps more work to do but we'll quickly take you through what we've done so far. We've done a range of electrical work with still lots more to do. Put in a massive bank of custom built lithium batteries, took the boat out of the water to replace all the through hulls, seacocks and one of the prop shafts, sanded down both hulls to gel coat, put six layers of protective barrier coat and three layers of bottom paint, built a new back swim deck, welded 90% of the new dinghy davits, we still need to finish these, installed 10 new saloon windows, which are also 90% complete, replaced the windlass, started the installation of a new stereo system, and last but not least, we painted the blue stripes pink. And now the hard work really begins. New galley, flooring, lounges, more heads, a shower, trampolines, massive solar installation, new hardtop bimini, and the list goes on. We hope to be done all of this work by the end of this video so we can set sail and begin exploring. Well, better get back to it. So this is the starboard forward storage area. As you can see, it's a fair bit of a mess at the moment. So what we're gonna do is give it a good clear out and then build a shelf around about here to put a fridge on. Alrighty, well, we've cleared most of the stuff out of here. We still need to give it a fair bit of a scrub down and then we'll be ready to build in the shelving and bring in the fridge. While I'm waiting for that fiberglass to set, I'm going to cut through this lining so that I can fiberglass this shelf support to the hull. It's 2 a.m. but the shelf is done. Just need to move the fridge down here and then I am going to bed. It's now 3 a.m. and we've had to take down three doors because clearly we can't remember to measure fridges before we order them. The fridge is going to fit by about a quarter of an inch so hopefully we learn our lesson this time. Okay, so do you want to explain what we've done? Um, we ordered a fridge and we didn't check the measurements. Our gangway measurement here is about 25 inches, maybe a little bit over. 
and the box is 27 and a half inches. So now we have to open the box and hopefully uh, it will fit. We'll see. It is about 25 inches. <laughs> so we can maybe get an extra quarter of an inch if we take off the latch for the door. But we'll see if we need to do that. By like this much, but smaller than this much. <laughs> yeah, it was scraping along the side, but it's in and never coming back up. <laughs> okay. Now for everything else. We've uh, sold our old fridge for two hundred dollars. Uh, treated us well, but uh, in its place is going to be some shelving or drawers. We're not quite sure yet, and we're going to put. A much bigger sink right here. So the whole galley should look a lot different when we're done with it. So we need to remove it and give it to the lucky buyer. Hey Bob, what are you doing? Uh, um, I'm not cutting through a live gas line because I drained all the gas out of it. <laughs> oh, you gotta be kidding me. There's no way. It's working. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if it doesn't fit out the door. There's no way they built that inside here. Okay. It's, it's quite bent. Yeah, it'll buff out. We were just going to paint over this blue arborite, but as you can see, it's starting to come loose in quite a few areas. So instead, we're going to take most of it off and then fill and sand the wood before we paint over it. I think that it's going to be a better job if we do in the long run. And I hate it. You ever uh, started cleaning up a spot where your oven used to be and then ended up ripping at your countertop? That was where the oven was. And then he's just worked around into this. So we figured we might as well fully commit. Uh, we turn the water off, it doesn't work anymore. And we're just going to rip the counter tops off, rip the sink out, and just get right into it. Might as well. That was supposed to come up easy.
<laughs> so as you can see, some of this is rotten, some of this is ripped out, came out with the sink. Doesn't matter because we're putting in a much bigger sink. So luckily all this rotten wood is going to get cut away when we put the new sink in. So as you can see, the salt water doesn't work too well. On this side it's still connected, but the pump doesn't work. We're going to remove all of this, and I dreamed up an amazing system that we can use for salt water, fresh water, and hot water. And you'll see that when we do the install. If anyone would like to buy this countertop, we're giving it away for the low, low price of $2 million. I slightly messed up when measuring the sink. We're trying to fit a huge sink into a very small counter space here. Uh, so there's a wall here that we need to shave a little bit into. Uh, and then the wall for these drawers here, we also need to shave a little bit into. But with shaving those little bits off of the wall, it should just fit. So we're gonna cut it out and see how it goes. Your sink's fancy when it comes in a bag. Swing and a miss. So we've encountered a problem here. On the original cutout for the sink, this and this aren't in it. And this is much wider than the sink, which is down here. So our hole doesn't fit. It fits the sink, but not these extra little bits. And we have no more space to go because we have drawers on this side and we have bathroom on this side, uh, bathroom wall. So it looks like it fits, it kind of does fit but it won't go all the way down. You can see my fingers still fit underneath here. So we're gonna have to uh, cut it with a rooter. So we're not gonna cut all the way through the countertop, just part way through, just to let those little bits go all the way in. But that's all we can do. Doesn't fit yet. <laughs> no, why won't it fit? Why? First try.
we've got the countertop in. It's safe for now. Uh, it's very flimsy, as you can see. And so we have to still flip it over and cover it with contact cement, cover the countertop with contact cement as well, and then flip it back over. We only get one chance to set it down, so we have to make sure it's good. Uh, we're also gonna cut a hole here for the sink, uh, but that's gonna be after the contact cement has all been put on. So let's uh, flip it over. It's like 6.45 a.m. We got up early to finish the countertops. It's been absolutely pouring cats and dogs here. And unfortunately we found a leak right over our new countertop. Uh, so it got a little bit wet. We're drying it out right now. We put a big tarp over the leak, but it's kind of screwed our plans for the day because uh, we were going to do countertop sink, all that stuff. So we'll have to reevaluate, do some other stuff and wait till it dries. To finally finish these windows, I'm going to cut the window bolts flush and then we can put the window frames on. That was way harder than expected. I had to cut through 120 of these bolts and I reckon I broke about the same number of these zip disks. But now we can have light again. We've got a big tarp over where it's leaking. And we're fiberglassing it. We've got a heater in there to keep it warm. So I won't open it. just saw the Coast Guard hovercraft. It was the coolest thing. We were supposed to be doing work, but we've been watching it for ages. Come in the marina and turn around and go back out. So cool. Gonna get this off. Don't don't pull. Don't pull. It's good enough. It'll work. It'll work for us. Okay? But that's where it's going. <laughs> it touched. It touched back here. Now it's done. I knew there was a reason I bought this expensive rolling pin. $17 for a rolling pin. It's ridiculous. Last step for the countertop. I just need to router uh, the sinkhole out and then around the, the countertop using a flush cup bit. But because there's no hole in here yet, I'm just going to edge into it with this bit. I've never done this before, so hopefully it goes well. Changed it out for the flush cup bit and also some earplugs because it's loud. Alright, here's nothing.
the moment of truth. It fits! Yay! My next job is going to be to rip up the carpet here so that I can start on some framing for the bench top where the fridge is going to go and a drawer and some storage space. Oh, that was easier than I was expecting. <laughs> I just need to flip it over so that I can screw in these cross beams from the top down. Welcome to our glorious inside helm. I've just removed this. I just got to cut the power cable. And luckily enough, we were fortunate to sell this. So uh, this is our chart plotter, old chart plotter. We have a new chart plotter that we're going to be installing outside. So I'll just hand that to you. And then we have our depth gauge here which uh, this depth gauge uh, is old school. It's from the 80s. It's uh, uh, massive as you can see. It still worked. It served its purpose, but uh, it's now done for. And unfortunately, uh, we tried uh, to give it away for someone else to reuse it, but nobody wanted it. We posted it on Craigslist and everything. So it's got to get uh, taken to electronics recycling. And last but not least, we have this absolute monster of a unit. And this is our old radar. So this unit is how we would uh, view our radar screen. And we were fortunate enough to get a new radar, and uh, the radar is on an NMEA 2000 system. So uh, we will be able to look at the radar via our chart plotter instead of this this big radar unit. So yeah, this thing is uh, it's definitely old school. The date of manufacture was 1986, so same year as the boat. So we set the radar back up just to show you how it worked because it's actually pretty cool. We used it once in the fog and it did work pretty well. So it has a two minute, 30 second warm up. That's done. Press the TX button here. And it's an old school movie radar. The screen is quite cluttered because we're in a marina right close to land, but uh, that's how it works. We're replacing the two passive vents with solar vents. We decided not to use the foam because it has a possibility to leak. So we're going to use Seekerflex, which you saw me just put on. And here we go. What are all the shells around you there? Huh, all there is. The deck's covered in them. 
all the time, even though we clean them off. There's crows that come and drop them right up from the top of the mast to break them open and eat, I guess, what's inside. And it's super annoying and super loud. The first time I heard them, I did not know what was happening. Today we're going to rip out the rest of the old carpet in the saloon. Then we're going to sand what's underneath in preparation for the new floors. This is another spot where we know the floor isn't good. Uh, you can hear here compared to where the floor is good over there. So we're gonna take this diesel heater out and uh, see how bad the floor actually is. This, this line just leads to nothing. So got lots of uh, lots of fuel supply. So that is. Clearly worse than uh, worse than we thought. So we're gonna have to replace all of this. I can just do this with my fingers. Uh, so all of this will need to be replaced. This is uh, probably a quarter of the section that I got to replace. Uh, we'll see how far it's good. Actually, it's pretty good there. Uh, it was leaking from this chain plate here um, down through here. On the other side is the same as well. So that's why all this is rotten. Uh, luckily, uh, there's no structural stuff. The uh, same thing will be rotten here as on the other side. There's a, a little bit along here that'll be rotten, but uh, it's a fairly easy, easy job to replace. It just takes a bit of time. Uh, chain plates have already been, uh, the leak has been rectified, so it won't be happening anymore. You can also see, if you come in right here, there is a big burn mark here, right by the diesel heater, uh, and that's, <laughs> doesn't give you the warm and fuzzies, or on the contrary, it might give you a lot of the warm and fuzzies. <laughs> nope. This is all going to get removed because this is insulation for the fridge that was down there, so take it out. And a special surprise is going to go in the cubby hole that was in that fridge. We'll have more on that later. You know when you kind of get into a job and it gets a little bigger than you anticipated? Fridge had a little bit more insulation than we thought it did, but it's a good thing. It means more space for our super secret surprise. So, got my replacement piece cut. Uh, we're going to temporarily install it because I need to remove it a bit later on. But we can put it in and it fits like a glove. 3.45 in the morning, we always seem to do this to ourselves during this refit, so uh, we have to pick up our flooring between 9 and 10 in the morning tomorrow, uh, which we're, we're probably going to be late for, <laughs> uh, but before we pick up our flooring, we have to epoxy these table bases down. Uh, they have to be completely installed uh, and done before the flooring gets laid down. So we're going to tape around them so we don't make a mess of epoxy, and then uh, epoxy them down. Right, sir. You're on. First is the worst, second is the best. <laughs> So we uh, haven't slept yet, and we're here in front of uh, the flooring place to pick up the floors. <laughs> There's trucks everywhere. I think uh, they were expecting us to come in a bigger truck, 
Uh, but we're, we're gonna try and get loaded and see if it works. So, wish me luck. Well, we've picked up the vinyl for the flooring, haven't slept all night, and we're gonna go home and sleep before we put it on. Oh, we got a great big convoy. We bought this box of tiles from Home Depot. Nice dark gray tiles. Yeah, yeah dark gray tiles. Beautiful. And uh, selected them from the wall of, uh, of backsplash options. And the lovely person at Home Depot handed us these tiles. And as you can see, they are not dark gray tiles. They are fairly white tiles. But we decided we actually like them anyway. Yeah, they're, they're pretty cool tiles. So we're gonna keep them, we're just gonna run with it. And it's pouring rain out and we wanted to install a backsplash today. So, that's what it is. Okay. First one, don't screw it up, eh? So the direction said to put a bit of soapy water on it, a mild detergent to avoid it sticking right away. And rub it around with your hand. Maybe that's too soapy. Let's see. We're just about done. I have a couple more pieces here, up here, and over there. But uh, we're both pretty tired, so we're going to hit the hay and uh, finish it up in the morning along with a bunch of other work. So, see you in the morning. It's 10.30 in the morning, we sit up all night, putting the floors in, getting ready for this moment where we can finally install our new fridge. We got the wiring done, we got these sliders we're gonna put on its feet, and just gonna slide it in. So let's get to it. Ta-da! That is a nice fit. Oh, easy. Pull up. Oh. Oh. Can't open the door. Nothing's ever easy. So after uh, a little bit of a struggle, we have figured out the solution. Apparently if you just slide little bits of cardboard, very aesthetically pleasing, under the fridge, 
both doors can open all the way. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> so we're obviously going to find something better than cardboard to jam under there, but it might take us a year or two. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, we did it. What's next? The table. Oh, the table. Okay, let's get it done. Before we get tired. We're going to start assembling our table now. We've had quite a few ideas for it and what we've decided to do is make a table that can drop down and become a bed as well. We've also been wondering about what to do about the size because initially we thought just a small table so that we'd have plenty of room still in this space. But we also kind of want a really big table to work on and eat and do everything and so that it's a good sized bed. Um, so what we've decided is we're going to make just a cheap plywood tabletop really big. We've done that and we've cut it to fit this kind of area. It looks really good even though it's plywood. Yeah. And, and then, yeah, once, uh, once we figure out if it works or not, uh, we can just cut it down to size. If it's too big, we can make it smaller with a saw because it's made out of plywood and it didn't cost hardly anything. So. so we'll probably end up just being a temporary refit kind of table and help us figure out what size we want. And then when we're kind of got a bit more time and know what we want, we'll make a more permanent tabletop. And we've got a few cool ideas of what to make that out of as well. These are cool in their own right. <laughs> All right, let's get the tabletop. inch table we were going to do 25 inches initially yeah. not that I use the imperial system but I have since learned because <laughs> <laughs> we use it all the time she's learned to make fun of it <laughs> but yeah significantly larger than we first were gonna do I love it yeah so do I I think it'll help with so much of what we want to do and there looks like there's plenty of room to get down that's the that was our main worry <laughs> Immediately does what she's not supposed to do. <laughs> I'm assuming she's not supposed to hit a bunch of buttons yeah, on that. Please, please don't touch anything on there. <laughs> no. We took a trip to Jedidah Island. It's uh, an uninhabited island just about five hours north of Vancouver by boat, uh, well, by our boat. <laughs> and we had all the stuff on board that we needed to, uh, to complete the work that we were planning for the next week. So we figured, why not do it with a better view? Well, uh, yesterday night, there was a bit of a water leak. Uh, so we lost a lot of water from our uh, port tank. So one of the jobs was to hook up the starboard tank. We had already filled it up with water. So we just started to do that, just pulled off the cabin floor, and we found a diesel leak coming from the engine, so I'll show you where it is. So if you look and see right from here, you'll see it drip. And that dripping has been going on for uh, a day or so since the last time I've had this engine up. Uh, and it can get worse when you move this uh, hose around here. So it's uh, this little fuel hose that I need to replace. It's about a foot long. I uh, don't have a replacement, unfortunately, but what I do have is this, because we just had to do a bunch of work on the cooling system for the engine. So temporarily, this will work. 
we'll get it in place and uh, we just have enough absorbent pads to properly clean up the diesel, uh, but we have to get more of those as well. For now though, I'll show you outside, which is much better than in here, although it's still a complete mess. So we're on a nice little walk on Jedediah Island. It's a good way to break up the refit. I don't think we've gotten anywhere near as much accomplished as we no, wanted to. Not even close. There's too much fun stuff to do. <laughs> yeah. So probably going to head back tomorrow, but uh, maybe a little fishing before we head back. Might catch some dinner. Yeah. Maybe finish this walk first. We made it to the other side of the island. There's an old farmhouse and it's really pretty. We're going to rush back though and hopefully catch our first fish ever. You got something? Yeah! <laughs> oh! There you go, Lincoln! Oh my god! <laughs> Finally, I caught something. What is it? Sneaky, sneaky weasel craft logger. <laughs> is it still good, you reckon? I, I let's see here. Oh, oh, oh. No, it does not smell like it's still good. <laughs> but it, it is still beer, though. <laughs> the but, can's all dinted. Yeah, I guess. Uh, I wonder how old it is. Some for Poseidon. And then we'll bring the can back to the boat. Oh, at least we've got the bottle. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Catch your heaps? Oh. For my first time. <laughs> well, no fishing was so easy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'll be eating my words soon, I'm sure. <laughs> You've just jinxed us. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh. It is 60, 68, oh. 68 centimeters. And uh, how many inches is that? That's just under 27 inches. Nice. All right. Dinner, I guess. Yep. <laughs> Cheers. To our first fish. First fish. <laughs> um, hopefully it tastes good. It's good. That tastes, that tastes pretty good. <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs> I built these trampolines about a year and a half ago. Uh, they turned out better than I thought they were gonna turn out, but worse than I'd hoped. <laughs> so <laughs> it's kind of obvious they're home built, uh, but uh, uh, it is what it is. Uh, this one's been tied up for a while, so I just gotta finish tying up that one and then check that job off temporarily.
All done. I can say my hands hurt and these knots are tied poorly, but they're supporting me. <laughs> What's next? 10 more million jobs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We found a hardtop bimini on Facebook Marketplace. We went and bought it for 200 bucks, quite a deal, but it's too small for the boat. So what we've done is cut it in half. That's one of the halves. And we're going to split it, build a new fiberglass panel for the center, and then put it all back together. That's the plan anyway for today and tonight and probably tomorrow. <laughs> it's, uh, it's probably gonna take a little bit. We haven't really fiberglassed anything this big. We haven't really fiberglassed a whole lot in actuality, so uh, we'll see how it goes. Before we put down the foam, I'm just gonna clean the dust off the fiberglass with some acetone.
So today's the day we're moving the hard top bimini into place. If all goes well, we're gonna carry it down with a bunch of friends from the mast room, which is all the way down the other end of the marina, down to here and hoist it up with the spinnaker halyard, and then hopefully hold it up with that while we weld it into place with some supports, which might happen tonight, late into the night or tomorrow, it's depending how it all goes. It's gonna go perfectly. <laughs> Nothing could go wrong. It's impossible. We have this planned out to a T. We do have it planned out to a T. He's the positive one, as you can tell, and I'm extremely nervous. <laughs> <laughs> so wish us luck. <laughs> The next project we're going to start working on is to rip out the old saloon bench seat. As you can see, it's pretty old and dilapidated and the material on it's really starting to disintegrate. So when you sit on it, it sticks to your back. The mast support is also needing recovering. We're going to rip it all out, then put some new foam down that we bought and put some new covers on that. I finally finished ripping up the old couch. There was about a billion staples in it and it took me quite a long time and I've even left some in and just duct taped over them and I'll deal with that later when I've got more time. For today though, I'm gonna make the new couch, hopefully. We've got some nice bright sunbrella material to use and some nice foam as well. I haven't sewed anything in years and years and I've never sewed anything like this, so I'm gonna watch a bunch of YouTube videos and hopefully I can do it. Do you wanna see what color the material is? Can you guess? Probably. Woo! Bright pink. Gonna brighten up this saloon and match the outside of the boat, of course.
we've come to the realization that if we wait for all the jobs to be done, we're just never going to leave the dock. So, despite the boat still being a bit of a mess, we're going to head up to Alaska and do some of the jobs along the way. So, I guess this is us casting off on the first leg of our massive adventure. We really hope you liked our first video. From now on, we'll be releasing videos every week in real time. So if you see us in your area, please come and say hi. Also, any advice on problems we're having or things to do would be awesome in the comments. Right now, we're heading from Vancouver to Alaska. We're going to be spearfishing, looking for bears, checking out some hot springs, and going to some of the most remote anchorages that we can find. After that, we're going to be heading down to Mexico via California. Our loose plans include Panama, Cuba, the Bahamas, and the Mediterranean. Even though we don't have any set plans, we are going to be moving around a lot. Hopefully, that means a lot of fun adventures aboard Supernova as we make our way around the world. If you have any questions, comments, or advice, please write it down below. Otherwise, we'll see you in a week. Subscribe so you don't forget. And give us a thumbs up if you like the video.